going to extreme honor and privilege, you know, to be before you all. I want to thank the administration. Thank you guys so much. I want to thank the educators. Thank you guys so much for giving me this opportunity. I know any time you're part of a culture, whether it's a school, whether it's an organization, you know, whether it's a sport team, whatever the case may be, anytime you're building a culture, it takes a lot to bring somebody from the outside in and trust them and put them in front of your kids. But just to give you a little background about who I am, I'm one that's very concerned with the plight of young people in our world. And so just as much poor work as I do, just as much corporate work as I do, I do just as much work with kids in schools and different areas and things of that nature. But real quick, before I get started, by show of hands, who in here wants to do something incredible with your life? That's right, right? All right, put your hands down. Now, real quick, who would mind to share with me? Raise your hand and share something with me about what you want to do. Army? Surgeon? Thank you. 
not respond, but everything is going well. And if we really want to see the true character of a person, we watch them how they respond to that person. That's why the cool Martin Luther King has it that the true measure of a person is measured not when they stand in moments of comfort and convenience, it's when they stand in moments of challenge and controversy. Because when adversity is, what happens is adversity introduces the person into who they really are. And most times not the people are not even mad at the level of adversity they face. The people are mad because they find out who they really are. Meaning when they go there and talk, but they were really a coward. Meaning when they talk and talk and talk to the game, when they get hit by adversity, it tempts them to see how bad they want, but then they tell you what, they find out they don't really want it as bad as they thought they did. But the one thing I've always had my whole life, I, I haven't been the most talented, even though I played sports back and forth when we left. Right? But the one talent that I did have, and I want you all to understand, is at a young age, I understood my existence represented a greater purpose than just myself. Meaning, I understood at a young age, you can only get so far being selfish. Right? You can only get so far. You attack situations, and you want to figure out, I can get the benefit of me because at the end of our life, you have to understand it. Most people live life on the one-way street. Right? They go into situations, and they're not thinking about the great theme of the situation, meaning they go into a situation that's simply saying, how can I benefit from the situation? What can I get from the situation? They want to approach the situation and say, if I can get everything I've got to forget the outcome, I'm going to become a better person, just by doing everything that I've got to every aspect of my life, understand the process of what we do is ten times more valuable than the product of what we do. And I have to pose the question, can you even listen to the process of what you do without being emotionally attached to the result of what you do? Meaning when you change something and it doesn't turn out the way that you want it to turn out, does your effort change and your level of commitment and dedication change? Matter of fact, when you get what you want, how driven are you then? Right? And most people don't even understand what commitment is, and what commitment is is saying do what you said you do. Go back to the move that you said that has back. The most valuable lesson I ever received from my mother, my mother had been 16 years old. She didn't have much education. She took me back to a two-bedroom home, 14 months, living on the east side of LA. Me and my cousin, we were in grade school, we were just reading with it. We were short for breakfast. My cousin was with Western Control Line, pushed everybody out of line, and the cafeteria administrator would put us on the wall and say, That's the boy, get on the wall. He can do the homework. Why are you not going to do this? Now, he used to be embarrassed, right? Because we had eaten the night before. So I would never say anything, but one morning, he was pushing it a little too far. Right? When you push me a little too far, I'm going to respond because I got to, right? It's coming to me. I can't let you push me too far, right? And when you push up, I looked at him, I said, man, we didn't eat last night. He said, oh, I didn't know. I said, you didn't ask. Because what, what most people do, they listen with their intent to reply, not their intent to understand. That's why when I sit up here, I said, I asked you for 25 minutes because I want you to listen because I feel as if I got something of value that you can add to your life. Like, I'm not just coming to talk. I never wanted to hear speaker. I remember when these guys were showing up in the park. Yeah, I'm going to go up, you're up here, I'm going to share my story. I want to see it. It never happened that way. I almost died. I almost died 10 years ago from chasing a dream. They got so much better back there in my life, and I almost died. I had to talk to myself and ask myself, what is life really about? And life is going to put me on the side, but when it puts me on the side, I'm just the type of person when I do something, I'm not like a light switch. Right? I don't turn it on and turn it off according to what I'm doing. Like some people, when they got something easy, they go all in, but when they face the challenge, they try to stay around, they try to make excuses, not to face it, not really to understand it. If it does a challenge, you won't change it. And so I was coming up in two round rooms with 14 people, people on the floor, and most of the time, I understood at a young age my last name represented something a lot greater than myself, the things I was a part of. Like one of the first things I saw, we were riding up to the school, I saw the pride of Tuscan. Or the sign in front of the school, under the name as the pride of Texas. I don't know if you know how heavy the pride is. Like when you say pride, I don't know if you understand how heavy that is because you're young, right? You're a teenager, right? I don't, want you, I don't know if you understand how heavy the word pride is. The type of pride I'm talking about, I'm not talking about the pride in the body that comes before the shock. And there's two types of pride. It's the pride that comes before the great fall, and this is the type of pride everything I do and everything I'm a part of, I guarantee you I will be the best in our family because I understand it's a privilege to be able to do it and be a part of it. It's the type of pride that you understand every day when you walk out the door, you represent a lot more than yourself. You can represent your family. You represent everybody that believes you and talks to you. And you can see yourself. It's the type of pride. Everything I do, I do it at a high level, my standards and expectations in the way that I do it. And so I can't get anything less than my best. It's the type of and so when you walk into a school and on the marquee it says the pride of Texas, something should be different. Like we can't just be like everybody else, we can't just do things just to do like when we got the pride of Texas, everywhere that we go, the things that we represent, the things 
be a big difference when I used to be a certain level of separation, but when I was younger, the pride of my last name, the pride of my mother had me at 16 years old and working all the time. This is where kids and kids are the pride coming up that two back were all fucking people with pride of me and my cousins. This was real. When we were kids, we still had to go to school and not to get streets. The pride of when I was 15 years old, I had a 9 million and a 25 cut off my face and got the night to look right over my feet. The pride. And so everything I did, I did it with a certain level of hunger, I did it with a certain level of commitment, I did it with a certain level of dedication. The pride, everything I did, I did it a certain type of way. Because I understood what I represented. And what I'm trying to tell you is the only you understand what you represent. Right? The only you understand what you represent, your last name, the things you apply, the things you do, the only you understand what you represent, the better all you will be. You know how people flip? Like, you know how people come in their streets? You know how people tap out? Like, if you show me somebody that starts up and they stop, the most valuable lesson I ever see from my mother. My mother had much education, man. But the one thing she told me, whatever you try, you're going to finish. She said, I ain't going to let you go throughout life and get top. So, what do you mean? She said, I'm not going to let you get involved in something like sports. If you come home because you don't like to coach, and you say, hey, mom, I don't like to coach. Can you kick me out? You get involved in that. Hey, mom, I really don't like the teachers. I don't like the syllabus. Can you kick me out? It's a little hard when I talk. And like, I'm not going to let you get involved in things and stop and stop and stop and pass out because you don't like something and it's not going to be up. Everything you start, you're going to finish it because the process of what you do, the formal values, and the process of what you do mean, you have to understand at a certain level what you acquire is not as important as who you become as individuals. And when you show me people that tap out, when you show me people that don't take pride in what they do, when you show me people that just show up and go through motions and they quit and they get I show you some of the most selfish people on the face of this planet. And kids have this, like kids tend to be selfish and arrogant. For whatever reason, like kids tend to be selfish and arrogant. Like they don't understand it takes 21 years to be 21. Tell me what it takes 21 years to be 21. I mean, this is certain, there's some things that you can't possibly learn simply because you haven't lived that long to be able to learn it. I mean, there's some experiences that you can't know how to put in fact simply because you haven't lived that long to be able to experience what has happened. Understand that, man, learn from the mistakes of others because you can't make them on yourself. And so everything you approach, if you don't have a greater balance for what you're doing, you will be better off in your balance for it to be a lot stronger than you just start with confidence. And you just start to pass it out because it's not what you're going to do. And as a kid, the thing that I say, every time somebody took a personal interest to me, and I came up in the environment where people got murdered. From the time I was born in the house club, you know, I was called murder. Right around the house, you get changed on with mentality. I was a kid, I got my boys and girls so far, and my cousins who walked in, boys and girls so screwed up, they're trying to work over. We want to learn how to play basketball. We want to learn how to play basketball. A guy comes out, in the front door, on the side of the street, he walks in the front of God, he sits on the car, in the front of God, he puts his hands in his chest, he looks up at the ceiling, the guy walks out the same sidewalk, walks up to him, from the ground out of the jacket, to the wind break I looked at my cousin. I said, man, you sure what just happened? He said, yeah, God just got shot. I said, no, I'm not going to walk like it didn't happen. And God just got his brain blown out. Nobody was like, oh, God just got shot. It's really blown out. Everybody was like, oh, God just got his brain blown out. I'm going to go ahead and bust out. I'm going to chill. And when I said to my cousin, I said, if you don't handle our business, like, if we come up like every other field, we come without any plans, we come without a lack of assistance, urgency about what we do, there's a strong possibility that if I come up in a bold environment, something like that, that's like we can make this and body can, and not even, we have a target on our back, just for being in a certain circumstance in the environment, so we got to go, we got to make it happen. And so every time somebody took a personal interest in me, whether it was an educator, whether it was a mentor, whether it was a coach, every time somebody came along, they said, hey, you son, I see something great, you do something incredible, I took heed and I listened. I went to the kids and said, oh, you see something great? Man, get out of here, you too bluff. But I had every reason to say, what you bluff? Get out of here, you know what I'm talking about? 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 You a lot of people don't even know how I got involved in football. My mother just signed me up. Like, I'm 34, I had eight games played for the first time drafted, and my mother didn't even sign me up when I was a kid. She started to it. My father wasn't around when I was a kid. He came around later when I started playing sports, doing it at a high level, he passed up. But a couple 
They served 13 and 40 years in prison, right now. They take off one. The guy gets out of his truck, walks up, and he'll allow him to say, y'all kids want to play football on the grass? I was like, yeah, I love that. He said, we're going to get involved. I'm going to ask my uncle to get about marriage. He said, hey, Earl, there's a guy outside. Would you please come and talk to him? Uncle comes out, Coach Trey said, listen, I don't even supposed to be in this community. He said, I brought a kid home. After practice, bro, I'm asking, I walk out the street, I see these kids playing tackle football in the street, they're bloody. I run on the knees across town, and I'll bring them out, and I'll just talk about, I think it'll be a great experience for them. My uncle said to him, sir, we greatly appreciate it, but we just don't have the money. And I was standing in front of the coach, and he said to, he said, his mother, he said, she definitely doesn't have the money. That coach looked at my uncle, he said, I tell you what, he said, if y'all get to the park, he said, I know what I paid for him. I don't think every kid in the street is great. They change their perspective in our life. From the first time my mother called on Christmas, after we got robbed one year, that coach. From the second coach that I saw in the hospital, after I almost lost my life trying to hit a football crying on my mother's shoulder, outside of John Chavis, that coach that Texas 